I used to take worms and I'd starve them, I'd mutate them, and I'd use a laser to eliminate their gonads. And that made them live six times longer than normal. I decided that I wanted to work on a problem in biology. And the most important problem seemed to be that when people got older, they began to accum accumulate all of this damage in their cells and in their body. And it made the lives of my grandparents and all the old people that I knew and very much cared about um, difficult and painful and almost humiliating when they weren't able to fulfill their normal functions. And as a kid, I didn't really understand how you could see something so traumatizing for a person to go through and, and see it as a normal progression. And so I started looking into what scientists were working on this kind of disease. And the first name that popped up was a <laughs> the most wonderful woman that I've ever met, Cynthia Kenyon. She is the best anti-aging researcher in the world, personal opinion. And she works here, actually, at UCSF. And so when I was 12 and I was living in New Zealand, I emailed her and said, can I please come and just see your lab? Like, we're coming out for a vacation. I just want to like, be able to step into the place that you work. And extraordinarily enough, after coming to her lab for a, a couple of hours, she said, if you come out here to America full time at any point, you can come work at my lab. Which was, I think, the, the beginning of everything. Um, and so I, I was like, Dad, we have to move to America. And we did. Um, and I worked in her lab for two years. And I learned biology from the grad school classes that were going on here. Um, and that was sort of the, the kicking point for me. That was when I got to experience what it was like to actually be in the lab and not just read about people doing experiments. The thing that I couldn't work on at MIT, that I needed the Teal Fellowship to, to pursue, was fixing funding in biotech, because it's, it's badly broken right now. Basically, a lot of companies have really exciting, innovative technology in their labs or in a university, but nobody wants to pay to commercialize it and prove that it's safe to use in humans so we can start getting it to people and patients. And so what we need are more sources of funding that go and say, okay, you know, we're not going to put financial returns as our number one objective. We're going to find the most interesting stuff and we're going to back that through to putting it into humans. Um, and so that's what I wanted to come out here to work on. So what we do in this lab is we take worms that are about the, the width of your fingernail and we manipulate their genes to make them live longer. And you can do extraordinary things with these worms. We have one mutation that will make a worm live 10 times longer than normal. And the same mutation is overrepresented in human centenarians. One really awesome experience that I've had is being told by old pharma guys that you can definitively cannot do this thing, that this is impossible and you will fail, and you know, here is how you'll fail. And then after you know, a couple of months going back to the same people and saying, I, I did that thing that you told me I couldn't do, um, and, and here's how. And having them change their beliefs about what is possible based on what I did. And I, I definitely think youth pushes you in that direction.